So in this video, we're going to think a little bit about transcription and translation, but what we're really going to think about is how we can use uh, genetic sequences to predict the sequence of an mRNA and a protein if we're given a DNA sequence. Okay, so there are other videos on the mechanics of transcription and translation you might be finding useful, but this is a guide to the sort of problems that you might encounter of trying to go from a DNA sequence to an RNA sequence to a protein sequence. Okay, so here I've got a DNA sequence. Okay, so you might be given this as the sequence of your gene, for example. Okay, um, so one of the things you might be asked um, to do um, is to um, give the other strand of DNA. Okay, so DNA is obviously a double stranded molecule. Okay, um, and here we've just given you a single strand, we've just got one sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's. Okay, so this uh, might be what we refer to uh, as the sense strand. Of DNA okay and what we might be asked uh, for is the antisense uh, strand or it could be called the complementary or it could be called the template strand basically the other strand of that DNA double-stranded molecule okay so the rules um, for uh, DNA based pairing Um, a pairs with T with two hydrogen bonds and C always pairs with G and that's because they can form three hydrogen bonds together. Okay, so those are the base pairing rules. It doesn't matter what organism it is, whether it's the nuclear genome, whether it's the mitochondrial genome, whether it's a plasmid, the rules of DNA base pairing are always the same, basically because that's the way that the biochemistry works. Okay, so uh, if this is my sense strand of my DNA, uh, then I could be asked for the anti-sense strand. So let's go through that. Um, so uh, let me just pick out another colour to do this in. Okay, so if that's the sense strand, then the opposite strand will be C, or C always pairs with G, A always pairs with T, C with G, G with C, C, then A, T, A, C, G, G, A, oh sorry, no, that will be a T, sorry, because uh, A pairs with T, doesn't pair with A, uh, C, G, uh, T pairs with A, 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 T, T, G, T. G. Okay, so in terms of my DNA sequence, if this, the sense strand will be the gene sequence, um, but we might be asked um, to do the other strand, which is the template strand or the complementary strand. So that's fairly easy. A's pairs with T's, C's pairs with G's. Okay, so the next thing that we are, might be asked uh, to do, so that's the first thing that we need to do, um, is rules of DNA space pairing. The next thing that we might be asked to do uh, is to predict the sequence of the mRNA or the transcript that is produced when that gene is expressed. Okay, so the process of gene expression uh, as we go from DNA, uh, which is double-stranded, uh, we get then make a molecule of mRNA uh, which is single stranded and that's the process of transcription and as I say I've got other videos that go through the kind of mechanics of that in quite a bit more detail okay so the question might be what is the sequence of the mRNA or the transcript if this is the DNA sequence and we're going to assume that we're going to transcribe the whole of it so the uh, so the RNA polymerase is going to use the whole of this sequence okay now, this is a bit where people sometimes get a little bit uh, in a pickle. So here we've got the DNA sequence, and obviously here we've got the two strands bound together. So this is, we're in the double helical form, okay? So we've got the double helix, and those two strands are the two strands of the helix, okay? When we transcribe, we form what's trying to form a transcriptional bubble. So rather than having the DNA strands together, what we have, we start with the DNA strands together, okay, so as before, and then what happens is the is we open that up to form what's called a transcriptional bubble. Okay, 
which then closes again. So we only keep a certain amount of the sequence um, exposed. So we basically what we do is to unzip the double helix for a bit and expose both strands together. Okay. So uh, on this side we've got our sense strand. Okay. So if I just put the sequence in there, C A C G G T A T G C C A G T T T A A and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so we know what the antisense strand. So this is the sense strand. This is going to be the antisense or the template. So that is going to have the sequence G T G C C A T A C G G T C A A A T T and so on. Okay. So that's physically what's happening in the DNA. We unzip it so we expose both of it. Now to make a new molecule of mRNA, we use the template strand to base pair to to make the new molecule. The sense strand doesn't do anything. We make the new one using the template strand. Okay. So the rules for making RNA are as follows. Okay. C still pairs with G. Okay. So you can have a C in the mRNA. Uh, sorry, a C in the DNA, and that will pair with a G in the mRNA. C and G still works. Okay. If you've got uh, so if you've got a C in the DNA, you can put a G in the RNA. That's okay. If you've got a G in the DNA, you can pair that with a C in the RNA. That's fine. Okay. If you've got a T in the DNA, you can pair that with A in the RNA. That's absolutely fine. But when you get to an A in the DNA, there's no such thing as a T in RNA. A has to pair with U, which is uracil. Okay, so you have a different base in mRNA. Okay, so let's go through that um, and make our sequence. So I've got a G in the mRNA, uh, so I can make that. So this is the new molecule of mRNA that I'm gonna do in orange. So I've got C. T is going to pair with an A, that's fine. G is going to pair with C, that's fine. C can be a G, G, that's fine. Now I hit an A, okay, so I can't have T, T doesn't exist in RNA, A has to pair with U instead, okay. T pairs with A, uh, A pairs again with U, C pairs with a G, uh, C, C, uh, T pairs with A, that's fine, G, here we've got some A's, so they're going to become U's, A, A, off we go, okay, so our new mRNA, you should notice has basically the same sequence as the sense strand of the DNA, so this is the gene sequence, C, A, C, G, G, T, Here's the sequence of the new molecule of mRNA, is C-A-C-G-G-U. Okay, so it's actually the same sequence as the DNA, the original gene, but we've swapped out T's for U's. Okay, so it's because we use the template strand in that way, actually it's the same sequence, but then we, uh, we just swap out, anytime there should be a T, we swap it for a U instead. Okay, so then we might be asked for the sequence of the protein that is made. So transcription is our first process. We then use the mRNA. Uh, we do the process of translation, which happens in the ribosome to make a protein. Okay, assuming that it's a protein coding gene. Okay, so we know the sequence of the protein. Okay. Now for here, you're gonna need a copy of the genetic code. So if you just Google genetic codes, you will get a table um, that gives you all the combinations of A's, T's, uh, sorry, uh, C, G, A and U um, and what each um, codes for each amino acid. Okay, So it works in groups of three. So three nucleotides in the mRNA corresponds to one amino acid 
in our sequence. And that again is uh, very, very predictable. Um, so you can just Google it uh, as a table. So you'll need to be able to use those sorts of tables. So let me just write out the mRNA sequence again. Okay, so our mRNA sequence from up here was C A C G G U A U G C C A G U U U A A. And let's just complete from up here. Uh, so that's going to be C A C. Yes, yeah, C A C. There we go. Off we go. Mm -hmm. So. The rules for making protein, okay, uh, is the first one is you have to find, the first one is find the first AUG, okay, which is known as the start codon. So the ribosome doesn't start anywhere. The, tra the RNA polymerase in transcription can start anywhere it likes, okay, but the ribosome in uh, protein synthesis can only start at AUG. Okay, so we don't start from the beginning. At the beginning, we've got CAC, or our first three. Okay? The ribosome doesn't care about CACs. It doesn't use it. What the ribosome do, does is going to jump on this sequence. So there's the ribosome. It's going to jump on the sequence and scan along until it finds the first AUG. So you shouldn't start at the beginning. You should go along your sequence. Have I got AUG? So there is my first AUG. Okay, and that's referred to as a start codon. Okay, so that's the starting point. Okay. So if you look that up in the genetic code table, you will find that that gives the amino acid a methionine, which its three letter code is MET, its single letter code is M. Okay. So because we always start with AUG, that's the only place the ribosome can start, the first amino acid of every protein is methionine. Sometimes it gets chopped off at the beginning, uh, but it's always made with methionine first. Okay, so you need to use a code, a genetic code table. As I say, there's loads of them on the internet. So if you have, you look for the first base is A, the second base is U, the third base is G, that will always give you methionine. Okay, then what you need to do uh, is to work in groups of three. Okay, so there was our first codon. Um, so sorry, I should have said, uh, that a codon equals three nucleotides in the mRNA. Okay, so codons are groups of three nucleotides. Okay, so AUG is what we call a start codon. Okay. Then what you do is you work along the sequence. So we've done AUG. Okay. Um, and the codons are non-overlapping, okay? So we've done AUG, all three of those have been used. The next thing we do is we shift along by three and we go to CCA, okay? So CCA is our second codon. So we don't use the codon UGC or CGC, C, GCC, sorry. Those don't exist. What we do is we go, we move along in blocks of three, okay? So CCA, uh, if I look it up in the table, gives me the amino acid proline which has the uh, single amino acid code of P, okay? So we can keep doing this. So the next one, again, we move along in three. Okay, so GUU is the next one. If I look that up, the first one is G, second one is U, third one is U. Uh, then we find in a code that that will be valine, which has a single amino acid code V. Then we do the next one, UAA. Okay, and if we look at the, uh, at the genetic code table, what you'll find out is if you try to do UAA, you will find that there is no amino acid um, associated with UAA. UAA is one of uh, three what we call stop codons. Okay, uh, which means that there is no corresponding amino acid. So there are three stop codons, so three combinations of letters where there is no uh, corresponding amino acid. So there is no tRNA uh, in translation. So actually, that becomes the, uh, the end of our protein. So this protein is, in fact, only three uh, amino acids long. It's not really a protein at all. The three amino acids is nothing. OK, we started with. A, so we've, what we did was we found the first AUG. That was our start codon. OK, we then worked in blocks of three. OK, so we work along systematically. Oh, 
in blocks of three. Okay, so we do AUG, MET, CCA, PRO, G, valine. Those in the ribosome, they will end up being linked to each other by peptide bonds. Um, when we hit a stow, stop codon, there's no corresponding amino acid. So therefore, we've got the end of the protein. Because there's no amino acid there, we can't make a peptide bond to it. Uh, so what happens biologically is the ribosome dissociates. Okay, so uh, if I'm doing the sequence of a protein, I've got three things. So first of all, I start first to find the first AUG and start codon. The second thing I do is I work systematically uh, in codon, so those three nucleotides, so I move along in three. And then a third thing that I do is when I find the stop codon, I end the protein. Okay, so going from the DNA, with just the gene sequence, a single strand of DNA, we should be able to predict the antisense strand using the base pairing rules. We should be able to predict the transcript, uh, and that's basically, it's exactly the same gene sequence, but you swap out T's for U's. And then we should also be able to predict the protein sequence using a genetic code table. We find the first AUG, we make that meth methionine, we move along in blocks of three in those codons, work systematically along the protein until we find a stop codon, which is the end of the protein. Okay, so, uh, so we can do this manually, uh, and you might be asked questions of that uh, in your assignments, for example. We can also do this computationally. It's also reasonably predictable. So obviously this gets quite tedious if you've got very long sequences, uh, but what you can do is if you've got your gene sequence, so let's say you've got, you know, 5,000 uh, ATCs and Gs, you've got 5,000 nucleosides, you can actually chuck that in a computer program. It will do all of this for you. It can tell you what the transcript will be and it can tell you what the protein would be at the end of it. OK, because it's because it's absolutely predictable. It doesn't matter whether you're in bacteria, whether you're in fungi, whether you're in animals, whether you're in plants, whether you're in the nucleus, whether you're in the mitochondria. Basically, these rules are the same all the time. So it's completely predictable. So you should be able to work out the sequences of the opposite strand of DNA, the sequence of the mRNA and the sequence of your protein if we give you a, a gene sequence.